Skincare is not going to solve your problems. Not all of your problems. It's definitely not gonna save your marriage. I've got another rant. Rant, 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 rant. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to talk about some hard truths about skincare. We need to come to terms with this. Don't worry, I still love skincare. You know I'm always going to be a skincare fanatic. I sell skincare. I am fully in it when it comes to skincare. But every now and then, I see comments from people, whether it's on my YouTube videos or on social media, like Instagram or TikTok, where people are like, I tried this product, it didn't do this for me. Or I've been having a skincare routine for X amount of years and my skin is still breaking out. Or even worse, I'll say that I've been using some kind of a skincare product like sunscreen or a retinoid because I want to keep aging at bay or I want to, you know, fully preserve. And the first thing that a person will say is that, oh, except you've got Botox, be honest, you get Botox or anything like that, right? And it makes me realize that people don't have the right expectation when it comes to skincare. There is only so much that your skincare products can do for you. So let's talk about it. Hard truth number one, it takes time and consistency and consistency really is the key. Any skincare product, it does not matter what brand it is, whether it's medical grade or a prescription. If you don't commit to using that product consistently, meaning as many times as you're supposed to use it, so whether that's three times a week, one time a week, whatever it is that you've been told, if you are not committed to using it consistently and also giving it time, meaning six weeks minimum, I always say three months is probably when you're gonna see the biggest change in your skin, you you will never be able to fully judge a product. You can never say if that product worked for you or didn't work for you if you didn't give it time and consistency. There are definitely products that are made to give you some instant results that you can visibly see. That can definitely happen where you maybe see some instant hydration, instant plumping. Dew Glow sunscreen, for instance, we actually have an ingredient in it that not only protects your skin from the sun, but because it has this reflective quality to it, it gives this luminescent look to your skin in some ways. That's why we call it dew glow because it's moisturizing your skin, it's also giving you a glow. And this glow is the light reflecting off of it. So there are ingredients that you can put into skincare products that give you this instant temporary result that you can actually see. And that's why a lot of the time you'll see the word visible results, right? And I think a lot of people will judge their skincare products off of that. How did their skin feel immediately after? And you should absolutely, that first impression is a big deal because a lot of the time what a first impression does for you is it tells you if you're willing to use that product consistently. The next hard truth is that little mistakes and even sometimes one mistake, one little mistake can set you back in your skincare journey. The reason why I bring this up is because I do see messages from people where they're like, I have been so good about using my products and being consistent and doing this. I've been using the products. I've had my skincare routine for years, for seven months months, for five months, and then I went on vacation and my skin is a mess because I didn't take my products with me. Or a better example, one little mistake is not wearing your sunscreen. The one day that you decided, I'm not gonna wear sunscreen, I forgot to put my sunscreen on, and then you end up being outside even longer than you expected to be, and you end up with a sunburn. For me, you know, little mistakes are a big deal because I have melasma, and melasma is so fussy and so finicky that if I eat the wrong thing, I can eat something spicy and I just, I get melasma. I can be outside for just a little too long. I get melasma. I have to wrap my head around the fact that I'm going to deal with a little bit more melasma than usual because I am choosing to eat something spicy, go to a hot yoga class or a cycling class, enjoy a jacuzzi. Little mistakes for me because I have melasma can turn into something I'm gonna deal with for a while. Another example of a little mistake that can really hinder your skincare journey is using something a little too strong too quickly. It happens to the best of us, even the people who know, like me, who have been in this industry forever, this can happen to us. I know, for instance, that I am really sensitive to prescription strength retinoids. They are so much stronger for me and I don't know what it is. I have been trying this for over a decade. I've been trying to get my skin used to using tretinoin. I feel like such a failure because I cannot get my skin to just adjust to tretinoin. So I keep trying. I go back to trying and then I stop. And then I go back to trying and then I stop. And I went a touch too aggressive this last time that I tried it. When I say aggressive, I just meant aggressive for myself, but not aggressive for the average person. There are definitely people I know who can use tretinoin every single night and they're like, oh, it's fine for me. For me, using it three times in the span of two weeks was too aggressive. And I ended up with perioral dermatitis. And this has happened to me before, but this time, 
This dermatitis is so aggressive that even this last prescription that the dermatologist gave me to try to make it go away, I've already gone through a month of it, hasn't gone away, it's only gotten worse. And so I'm gonna now go down this journey of having to use all these different prescriptions to try to make it go away. And this is for one little mistake. And sometimes, you know what? This is part of the skincare journey. You're gonna test out a few products. You're gonna have some really good results. Then you're gonna test newer products or you're gonna try to add something else into your routine because you've been having these great results. And then you're gonna be like, man, a setback. I went too aggressive. I used something that my skin didn't agree with or it just wasn't the right product. And you're gonna have a setback in your skincare routine. That's okay too. Just know that this can happen and it's normal. The next hard truth, you might need a professional. I think that's probably one of the hardest ones for people because a lot of the time when it comes to finding a professional, meaning a dermatologist, an esthetician, maybe a plastic surgeon, that takes money. And I know that that isn't necessarily something that everybody can afford. And that's why that's a really hard one to wrap our heads around. Sometimes it's not even for vanity reasons. You might be dealing with perioral dermatitis like I'm dealing with. You might be dealing with really severe acne or some kind of a skin issue that you just cannot solve. If your skin issue is not being resolved, you might have to see a professional. And the longer you wait for that, the more severe that skin issue might become. And when it comes to cosmetic issues, sagging skin, deep set dark circles, you might have to see a professional if it bothers you that much. I'm all about embracing our features and who we are and how we look. I don't want people to think that just because I want to correct something, for instance, my dark spots, a lot of people say to me, why don't you just keep your freckles? They're super cute. I think freckles are adorable. I see people all the time and I'm like, oh, they look so cute with those freckles. But for me, the dark spots don't look like freckles and it bothers me. I want to go and correct that. That doesn't mean that everybody has to and that I'm gonna look at somebody or everybody else is gonna look at another person with hyperpigmentation and think that person looks bad. A lot of the time, what we're nitpicking about ourselves, we don't even notice on other people. So always keep that in mind too. Just because you see someone like me going to fix this or correct this does not mean that you have to. I am never advocating for you to have to go and solve these problems and to have to go see a professional. I'm just saying that if something is bothering you enough and your skincare isn't solving that issue, you might have to see a professional. Hey guys, just want to let you know, I understand the struggle of waiting to see a dermatologist, whether it's trying to find the time or you're on a wait list. I'm a busy mom and I do not have the time. And that is why I use Apostrophe to get access to expert dermatology teams and prescription treatments. Plus it's so convenient because the whole process is online. Board certified dermatologists craft your initial treatment plan, which can be a combination of oral or topical medications that address skin concerns like acne, rosacea, hyperpigmentation, and even just signs of aging. I've seen some really great results treating my melasma, which you guys know I deal with on a regular basis, but we've also been working on what might be acne rosacea or maybe just perioral dermatitis. If you want to try apostrophe for yourself, you can use my code. It's Susan Yara and it gets you your first consultation for $5 and $5 off your first order. And that leads actually to the next hard truth. If something cosmetically is bothering you enough and your skincare can't fix it and you go to a professional, there is a solid chance they're going to say you need surgery or at least some kind of a in-office procedure, right? So they might say you need some filler or you need some Botox or you full on need surgery. And that is something to wrap your head around. You know, if something about your features is bothering you enough, your skincare cannot solve that. It is not going to fix that for you. It is not going to change something like that for you. So you might need surgery or some kind of a procedure. And that is always a really hard one for people to wrap their heads around. I experience this all the time. My aunts, like aunties on my side of the family, on my husband's side of the family, they want me to suggest products that are going to stop facial hair from growing, get rid of their dark circles, stop their sagging, stop their deep set wrinkles and make them magically disappear. I'll sit there sometimes and be like, I have zero product to suggest to you that's gonna solve that. And they sit there being like, well, I don't wanna have surgery. That's okay. You don't have to have surgery, but it's not gonna get fixed then. It's one way or the other. You're either gonna accept that you have this kind of a trait and that's fine, totally fine, or you're gonna have surgery. The next hard truth, just because a product from one brand didn't work for you doesn't mean it wouldn't work for you from a different brand. Remember, formulation is 
key. I actually experienced this a lot with benzoyl peroxide. We have a benzoyl peroxide cream cleanser from Naturium. It's amazing. We have put some really nice nourishing ingredients in it. We use a micronized benzoyl peroxide so it even gets in there a little bit better and it does its work and it's such a nice elegant formula. But I get tons of questions about this and you can tell it's from people who've had bad experiences with benzoyl peroxide, which makes sense. Benzoyl peroxide alone is a really fussy ingredient. It can cancel out your other ingredients, cause stains on your pillowcases and your clothing, irritate your skin. I mean, there are just so many different things that people have experienced with benzoyl peroxide products, especially the old school benzoyl peroxide products. And I see this come out. I can just feel this like anxiety over using a benzoyl peroxide product from people. So they have so many questions about this cleanser, about what it might do to them. And I find myself constantly telling people that one, no matter what, as a brand, we can't reassure them that this is going to absolutely be different. There's just no guarantees when it comes to skincare. You have to try it for yourself to understand how it's gonna work for you, right? But we have definitely tried to put in ingredients and formulate it in a way that helps solve those issues that people used to experience in the past with this type of a product. And this is kind of the case, I think for a lot of brands these days. With me for sure, when it comes to the products that we're formulating for Naturium, we're constantly looking at, well, what were the products of yesteryear? And what were the biggest issues that people dealt with with these products? And how can we do that better now? Like if people complained about dryness from using a certain type of product, how can we make that product better for them now? You can tell from the questions that we get about these products before a person's willing to buy it that make them very hesitant and skeptical, which I completely understand. And you should absolutely ask these questions. But it just leads me to realize that just because a product didn't work for you from one brand doesn't mean it won't work for you from another brand. But that can lead to a lot of trial and error. And that's another hard truth. It does take a lot of trial and error to figure out your perfect skincare routine. And this isn't just for products. You will have to try a few different products to be able to find the routine that works for you and the products that work for you. But you're also gonna probably have a lot of trial and error of like even how many products you're willing to use. Whenever people reach out to me and they're like, will you help me figure out a skincare routine? I always ask, how many products do you think you would realistically use in your morning skincare routine? How many products do you think you would realistically use in your nighttime skincare routine? And I find a lot of people don't give realistic numbers. I'll have people say that they have never committed to a skincare routine, but they're willing to use eight products in their nighttime skincare routine if I make them a routine. And I know that's not true. You have to be realistic about what you're willing to use. It's gonna take a lot of trial and error. Are you gonna be willing to use three products consistently and really commit to those three products in your nighttime routine? If you do that, maybe you can eventually add a fourth product and maybe a fifth product. But if you go too hard all at once, that's just going to be a recipe for failure. It's just like working out. If you try to work out way too hard your first day back to the gym and you're super sore and you can't move the next week for like five days, then you're not going to go back. You're just going to dread it, right? It's the same thing with your skincare routine. If it feels too intimidating, you're not going to commit to it. So start small, give it a little bit of trial and error and see what's really working for you before you actually give up. But also know you're going to be testing out different products. If you're trying to find an S esthetician even, this is beyond the products. You might have to try a few different estheticians and get a few different facials to find the one that works for you and that gives you results. If you're looking for a dermatologist, you might not like the first dermatologist that you go see and then you have to find a new dermatologist. So know that everything in your skincare journey can be a lot of trial and error and it can take some time. The next hard truth, not every product is made for you and that's okay. Not every product is made for me either and that's okay. This video, a lot of it stems from messages that I have just consistently seen over the years. Before I had a brand and especially now that I have a brand, one of the things I've noticed is that people will be like, you have so many products. Why would anybody need all of these products? And the answer is nobody needs all of these products. We are creating products that serve specific needs for specific skin types and specific skin issues. And not every product is made for every single person. They're made for the people that need them. You know, I see a person giving a bad review about a product, especially a skincare product. If it doesn't have something to do with like texture, like the, the way that the product feels, maybe it's sticky. If it's beyond that type of a review, if they're saying that they just hated this product and not really giving any context, telling you what their skin type is, if they even dealt with that skin issue that it's supposed to be solving. Whenever I see people just giving a bad review, most of the time what I'll notice is that this product wasn't probably meant for this person. For me, I love to double up on my moisturizer. I can use 
so many moisturizers in a night because I have dry skin. So I love a really rich, thick moisturizer and that is meant for me, but it might not be for somebody who has oily skin or even somebody who has normal skin. You might not want that much moisture. So just remember, not every product is made for you and that's okay. This is where it's gonna start to get really hard. These are some truths that sometimes are just really hard to swallow. And the next one is skincare is not going to solve your problems. Not all of your problems. It's definitely not gonna save your marriage. A lot of the time, skincare is really more of your maintenance. That is what you use to maintain what you now have. For instance, it's preventative, right? Your sunscreen is preventative. It's protecting your skin. It's trying to keep you from getting hyperpigmentation and melasma and a sunburn, for instance. That is prevention. Vitamin C is another great example of this. I know that vitamin C has been really heavily marketed as an ingredient that evens your skin tone, stimulates collagen, and sounds like a miracle ingredient. And then you'll hear a lot of people complain that they didn't see a big difference for them. And while it does actually do that for some people, it can actually help even their skin tone and brighten their skin. What I actually think vitamin C is most important for is its antioxidant properties and how it further protects your skin from pollution and free radical damage. So vitamin C can serve its purpose, but in a lot of ways, it's been overly marketed to be a miracle ingredient and it disappoints people. So they stop using it. Wrinkles is another one. Yes, skincare can make a difference when you have some fine lines and wrinkles, like if your skin is dry and dehydrated. Sometimes just adding that hydration can plump up your skin. Suddenly those wrinkles seem to almost miraculously disappear. Yes, your retinoids can help prevent some of that wrinkling and it can help with your collagen and elasticity. All of it is to definitely maintain and help and prevent. But once you have that major sagging, once you have deep set wrinkles, you might not be able to find skincare that's going to help solve that. And dark circles is really the one that I see the most questions around, right? Which eye cream is going to stop my dark circles or stop the puffy bags that I have. If it's, you know, genetic, you have deep set dark circles, you have these bags that are starting to form because you have fat pockets or sagging, you are going to have to have some kind of intervention that is not your skincare. Maybe after that intervention, your skincare can help prevent it from coming back, but your skincare is not going to solve that kind of a problem. And if anybody tells you, any brand is saying it's going to stop your dark circles, it's gonna take them away miraculously forever. Stop your sagging, stop your wrinkles. Any kind of claim like that, they're lying. Your skincare is necessary and I love skincare, but it is there for maintenance and prevention. It is not going to completely solve your skincare problems. And then the final hard truth, which is surprisingly the most polarizing one, if you're not protecting your skin from the sun, none of this matters anyway. It really doesn't. I don't want to hear somebody tell me that they have a 10 step skincare routine they are using every single ingredient, but they refuse to wear sunscreen or they refuse to stay out of the sun or they refuse to wear a hat and UPF clothing and cover up in the sun. People sometimes think that I'm crazy. If you actually see me, I live in Miami and before that I lived in Los Angeles, sunny, sunny places. I love the sun, but I know I'm gonna have to have some balance here, right? When I go outside every single morning, I am putting on my sunscreen. Sunscreen is a part of my daily routine. Even if it's gonna be a rainy day or a cold, dark day, I'm still gonna wear sunscreen because I have made it a part of my morning routine. But not only that, I don't just mean sunscreen, which is probably the most polarizing part of it. I see so many people, especially with TikTok, say that it's the sunscreen that's aging them or that's hurting them or causing some kind of an illness or whatever it is. I don't want to hear about these ingredients that you're using in your skincare routine to like stop aging or whatever if you refuse to wear sunscreen. People that just don't enjoy sunscreen. There are so many sunscreens these days, I don't even wanna hear. You can find a sunscreen that you like these days. There are so many. Every brand seems to have a sunscreen now. You will find a sunscreen if you actually look because remember, it's trial and error. Find yourself a sunscreen, but also keep in mind, Sunscreen isn't the only protection you need from the sun. When I walk outside, when I'm gonna go walk my dog, I have a hat on, I have my sunscreen on. Sunglasses are probably the one that I will sometimes skip just because sometimes I have a hard time with sunglasses, but I'll have my long sleeve UPF clothing on. Sometimes I even wear like a neck scarf that protects me from the sun because this is where I really want that protection. I go all out. You have to be serious about protecting your skin from the sun because the sun causes the most damage and that is all there is to it. So those are my hard truths. I can come up with more hard truths. I'm sure you guys have some too, so share them in the comments below. Find me on social media. I'm at Susan Yara on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and all of the places. And if you guys wanna see anything else, any other topics in a video form here on YouTube, let me know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.